uh, make 10 to 15,000 US on those ones. I sold my house, put in Bitcoin, and that's it. And I live off it. That's what you need to be able to be, you know, start, you know, as a coach. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So I'm here with Jojo again, and we'll be interviewing Digital Nomad one more time, but today we are interviewing them from the beautiful beach here in Bali. So stay tuned because we have some amazing interviews coming up. Let go. All right, so do you mind telling me what's your name and where you're from? Yeah, my name's Dion. I'm from Australia originally, but now I live full-time in Bali. My name's Jamie Barker and I'm from uh, London. I'm Simon Helwig. I'm a gas engineer from London, or was a gas engineer. My name's Elizabeth. I'm from England. Okay, I'm from Italy. I'm Caio. And do you mind sharing what do you do for a living as a digital nomad? Yeah, so I basically create uh, fitness content and do online coaching, online fitness coaching. I'm a musician and DJ. Um, I teach DJ retreats, both in person and online. I sold my house, put in Bitcoin quite a while ago, and that's it, and I live off it. No way. I teach break dancing online. My plan was to be a digital nomad when I came out, but I landed here about six weeks ago. And now, all of a sudden, I've got a job to be a general manager of a boat party. Oh my god, how did you get started? I just came here, I kind of didn't know what else to do. I was here in 2020 when things closed and was kind of stuck here. Um, started DJing, it went well. Most of the time I do like ecstatic dance, which is quite big here in Bali, especially Ubud and Chenggu. And then a lot of people ask me, like, can you teach me how to DJ? So I figured out how to do that, ran retreats. And then last year I filmed the online course and now I teach students from all over the world. So I was in, I'm from London, so I worked in London, Northwest London. I worked like mad, so I paid off my mortgage and stuff like that. So that's why when I, I could take the equity out. So when I found something that I believed in, I just did it that way. Wow. So if you believe in something, just go for it. Can we know like how much you invested initially in Bitcoin and like I invested about eight, 80,000 before I sold my house. You went all in? Yeah, then I sold my house and put that in. And I sold my Ducati and I put that in. I thought, I love fitness, I love the gym. That's what makes me happy is the gym. And I thought, I can't sit in an office for the rest of my life doing something I'm not passionate about. But you know, in school, especially in the UK, they tell you you're going to be an accountant, you're going to be a banker, you're going to be a lawyer, you're going to be a doctor. There's not an option of doing something like this, like being a digital nomad, okay? Being a TikToker, you know? And we'd seen a lot of uh, fitness guys, you know, posting on TikTok, young guys. So I thought, right, me and my mate, we started posting on social media. We thought, why not start posting? Why not try and make something of ourselves? And then, yeah, a couple of years down the line and it, it just, just all come together. And I thought, yeah, that's, that's what I want to do with my life, you know. It doesn't matter. It may not be the typical, typical career path of, you know, banker, lawyer, doctor, accountant but I'm doing what I love. I'm helping transform young guys' physiques. I'm helping people become the best version of themselves. First, I started with YouTube, just uh, publishing videos about breakdancing, tutorials, um, showing my skills. And then people started, t uh, started asking me for that. Yeah. And uh, I started with Patreon okay. first. And then from Patreon, I switched to online coaching. Okay. And then I started making online courses and PDF guides about breakdancing and now I just started a blog also. So I actually put on a picture of me and my friend who've come out to Bali from England mm -hmm. and we were looking for accommodation. So we put on a picture, you know, she works in social media marketing, I work in hospitality. We're looking for a villa, two bedroom, this budget, around this area. We got this message from a guy going, we don't have accommodation but we do have this boat party promotional video launch if you and your friend would be up for it just right up our street yeah. so we're like okay yeah we'll yeah. do it yeah we're clearly asking the right questions and then he's actually offered me a job off the back of that so it just so happened to be right place right time yeah do you mind sharing with us how much do you make per month roughly and what's the cost of living here in bali that's a tough question i mean bali cost of living can be quite small or it can be quite a lot depending on to what level of comfort you like mm -hmm. um, for me my business is it's still kind of quite new so it fluctuates um, I run three or four retreats a year um, I make 10 to 15 thousand US on those ones um, I play a lot of gigs as well so um, yeah it's a bit of a mixture it's it's up and down like anywhere it's a little um, 
can be inconsistent, can be uncomfortable, but it's it's worth the risk for a, a beautiful life here. Yeah, so roughly how much I make per month uh, is anywhere in between two to three thousand pounds a month at the minute. And where does your client mostly come from? My client base is now mainly in the UK, um, but I do have some based um, all around the world. But yeah, I actually, I really do enjoy working with uh, UK based clients. It's pennies and pounds, like meals are eight pounds, like you can't get that in London. Eight pounds back, just about getting you on the bus. Yeah. So that's why you see so much people happy here, because they're just chilling, they're living the life. Yeah. I just wasn't confident to do it at a younger age. Mm. I would say chase that money, build that wealth and then do it. Breakdancing is a very small niche, yeah. so there are not so many breakdance uh, coaches right now. Still pretty low, I think, uh, less than 2,000 uh, US dollars per month. So I'm kind of investing, reinvesting, yeah. not only for living in Bali, but also I have like two uh, people working for me. Oh. So I'm spending pretty much everything I have at the moment. Yeah, but I think it's good because like you're building, but also reinvesting yeah. in yourself and in your courses and in your life. Yeah, yeah. And I think with the salary you would be making, it would be harder, I think, to live in Italy. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And what do you say is the best part of being a digital nomad? For here, the, like, the ability to live a cheaper lifestyle if you need to for a while. The community here, like, there's so many people doing it, so it's very easy to, to meet people and collaborate and get ideas and inspiration. Uh, well, I graduated uni only about six months ago. Uh, I started working, um, you know, well, I started doing my online working and I thought, you know, I, I want to give this a proper shot. I don't really want to go and get a typical nine to five. Uh, and I thought, look, you know, most people my age backpacking around Southeast Asia and I thought that I want to see the world. I want to see Southeast Asia, but I want to keep doing what I love, you know, creating fitness content, online coaching. So I thought, you know, why not come out to Southeast Asia, come to Bali, go to Thailand and try and make this work as a career while seeing some amazing parts of the world. Bali's wicked, you know, it, it's a great place. Look, I love my training, you know, love my running, love my food. Um, and, and here's just such a great place for it, you know, every day, wake up, straight to the gym, hit the gym, do the ice bath, do the sauna, you know, come work in the afternoons, you know, work into the evenings. It's just it's such, it's such a good way of living. Um, and it's, you know, it's really motivating me to make this work long term. I would say I'd put myself out there, which seems so stupidly cliche, but the message that I actually put on the group, it was half 11, 12 o'clock at midnight and I thought, I just need to do something. Like, I'm sat here wanting it, but you can't want accommodation. You can't want to get yourself somewhere. You need to do something. So I thought I'll just very quickly do it and, you know, put it away, go to bed, wake up. And then the message was sat waiting for me in the morning. So it's just a case of, Put in a lot of trust in yourself which is so much easier said than done but once you just do a little thing five minutes one day it's just five minutes more than you would have done yesterday yeah. just little things that you keep doing yeah. so if you've got that mentality of being hungry especially at a young age which a lot of people don't have yeah. just be nice to people and just ask some questions a lot of wealthy people are really nice it's the people that are not wealthy that are trying to pretend to be wealthy are the ones that are more arrogant and have these attitudes but if you, if you work hard, you'll meet some really nice people because people love hard workers. If you grow up hungry, you naturally will do it. Mm. And you'll appreciate, yeah, you work hard and people love that, mm. yeah? Spoiled people will never get anything. They'll get it from their parents, but in real life, they will get nothing. Mm. So, yeah, you just got to stay hungry. You just need to try, maybe create something free at first. Maybe it can be online content, YouTube videos, short videos, maybe just a blog or anything else. Just do it for free at first to experiment. When you know what people are asking for, you can try to sell something. Cool. Yeah, maybe it could be a course, it could be a product, depending on the niche, depending on what you do. You 100% don't need, the uh, need a degree, but the most important thing um, is, it's not actually any qualifications, like PT qualifications, but it's experience. Uh, I've been, uh, it's experience and results. So I've been lifting, uh, lifting weights in the gym now for about eight years um, and I'm now actually a hybrid coach as well um, so I've only been running for just under a year but I've got the results in races you know which hold to my name so you know you essentially need results 
in how your physique looks and results in if you're a powerlifting coach and the weights that you're lifting or if you're doing running, you know, in the times that you're getting. All right, guys, so I hope you find some inspiring insight from the interview we just did. And if you want to know more about like other interviews that we did before, check out our previous video about digital nomad here or there <laughs> and also like if you want to learn more about digital nomad skill you can click the link in my description box below and learn more about how to become a digital nomad by learning about digital marketing skills so that's all for this video and I'll see you on my next one bye